to become the first since Arsenal in 1935 to complete three successive league championships. So here they are on a windy, sunny day in Nottingham, poised to make post-war football history. And yet another prestigious trophy looks on its way to Anfield and to the double football of the year, Ian Rush. With 31 league goals among the 46 he scored for Liverpool this season, he's favourite to win the European Golden Boot Award and become the first British player ever to do so. Records just seem to follow Liverpool around. Number two, Phil Neal, stands to win his seventh championship medal. That would equal Phil Thompson's achievement. But this club still thinks mainly of the future. And latest signing John Walker at number 10 could shortly be joined at Anfield by Paul Walsh from Luton Town. For Notts County, a contrasting story. Relegation for them means they may have to sell. Injuries to Justin Fashionu and Ian McCulloch haven't helped, and Kenny Armstrong this week returned to Southampton after his loan period. David Clark and David Hunt return in defence. Referee this afternoon is Danny Vickers from Ilford. Knox County in white kicking off and Liverpool in red, knowing that a win here would definitely mean they're champions. A draw would make it certain, barring a mathematical miracle. Here's John Walk. Here's Clark for Knox County. And the wind's going to play some tricks this afternoon, that's for sure. Swirling around the ground. That's Martin O'Neill, looking for McParland. Here's Simeon Hodson, the young right back, only 18. He's played the last 11 matches. Richards. And Mick Leonard. Christie's header. Kennedy. And Doug Leish. Whelan to Sunis. Right on to the referee, quite an advantage there. This is good win, as foul it was. It was his ball forward too. And Shadozi between the two central defenders. And Lawrence is still able to get the ball back in safety. Sunis. And Neil taking up a good position. free kick and Lee has the ball Douglish Shadozi Lee against O'Neill Lee again and they're onside it's John Walk and it's got to come, and he blocked well. <laughs> and onside again, this time Chidozi for Knox. McParland in the centre, Christie just behind him. There is Christie! And two good examples of the linesman keeping his flag down. First at the Notts County end, John Walk was allowed to go through, and he was right, was uh, linesman Alan Ward there. He was onside, a good save by Mick Leonard. Then look what happens. Up at the other end, away go Notts County. Chidozi waved on by the other linesman, Howard Hampshire, and Christie shot just wide of the far post. That was a good couple of minutes. This is Clark. And now O'Neill. Oh, Chidozi 
first touch only found Lee and here's Douglas. Rushes over on the far side. Walk is coming through the centre. His touch will find Rush. A chance for Liverpool. And even the man that scores 46 goals in a season for his club occasionally puts one the wrong side of the post. So, stoppage time at the end of this first half. And a half of precious few scoring chances. Ian Rush missed one, but by and large defenders on top and the Liverpool supporters presumably filling in the interval by tuning in to a few transistor radios to see what's happening to Manchester United. But in this match at the moment, though despite the sunshine, that's the Notts County manager Jimmy Cyril up on our camera gantry taking a bird's eye view of his team's performance. Liverpool now playing from the right, a mistake by Hunt straight away, puts in Dalglish. This is Lee. And John Walk getting in behind Haku. Rushes in the centre. Richards a good tackle. People talk about summer football, but it isn't always as easy as you think this because the sun's shining. Haku. Just chipped forward, a nice ball to Chidozi. And Harkook again, good effort from the man that began the move, Rashid Harkook. Good strike that well. After combining with Chidozi, and here's Clark. Bill Neal's tackle, he played the ball. Weisman says corner. It's a good effort by Harkook, but Notts County have a corner. And David Hunt will go up on the near post, and so too will Christie. And it's awkward. Oh, and it ran right across, and Martin O'Neill couldn't convert it. Goodwin went in first, but it's Chidozi. And that's awkward too. The Liverpool to clear, but soon as did so. Troubled Liverpool, Goodwin tried to get a touch and couldn't, and Martin O'Neill couldn't put it away, and Liverpool survived. Oh, Larry Lloyd, who said before the match he hopes Notts County win this one, but he hopes Liverpool win the championship. Kennedy, a good floated pass to Dalgleish. Whelan is just inside, number five. Good effort. Really comes on strong, Ronnie Whelan, in the second half of the season, especially this year when he really didn't get going until February after his injury. And he's been back to his best form recently. Alan Kennedy. And instead, here is McCollum for Knox County. It's a promising run. There are three the other way for him. It's a good tackle by Whelan on Hodgson. And it's given Dalgleish the chance to look up and see John Walk. Oh, that's a good little ball inside to Lee. Rushes outside him. Stripped him a bit wide, that, actually, but uh, the return can come into Lee. 
Walk is in the center. Here's Dalglish. And his rush. And Hodgson has got it out for a corner. Decent clearance by the 18-year-old, actually. It wasn't easy, that. He's driven in low by uh, Ian Rush. Here's Dalglish again. Lee. Dalglish. Martin O'Neill. A couple of minutes left. Alan Hansen for Liverpool. And Graham Souness. He goes to the referee and says, what about that by Pedro Richards? What did holding? Graham Souness, who thought he could get a toe into that, but for the challenge by Richards, is disgusted. And here's Souness again. Now, can he get rushed through the middle? He has. And Mick Leonard saw him coming. Liverpool doing all they can to clinch the title in style. seen modern football history achieved here today surely Liverpool have taken the point they required from this match and the fans can now start to celebrate so the Liverpool legend goes on there were few scares for them today indeed they had the better of the match and might well have pinched it towards the end Notts County who go down to the second division did nothing to disgrace themselves but it's the Merseyside supporters the Liverpool fans who are able to celebrate once again. It's a feeling they know well because their club are going to be champions for the seventh time in nine seasons. How do you beat that? Into a cauldron of excitement and raw emotion. Your commentator, Alan Parry. After 16 years of unprecedented success, Kevin Keegan makes his final journey as a professional footballer and the Geordies have prepared a memorable goodbye.
Early free kick played in towards Connor, that's Kevin Carr. Firmly setting Newcastle, who are attacking from right to left, underway with Truett. The pitch green and in perfect condition. Arthur Cox, as ever, urging greater effort, even though Newcastle are safely in the first division, and as far as the league table is concerned, this is a game that doesn't matter. Roder. Look for McDermott. Heading never been one of Terry McDermott's strong points, he would agree. Here's Wobble. Funny shot. Good save by Corrigan. And Waddle again. Away by Connor, but only as far as Beardsley. Can he finish? C Corrigan got down again. So did Eric Young. And in the end, it scrambled for a corner. But it was the shot by Waddle which started all the danger. Firmly struck, and Corrigan made a very good save. There's Beardsley. Well, somehow he came out with the ball. Alan Young took it off him. Now Jones. Ryan. Good challenge that was by McDermott. Here's Case. Wharton intercepted. Which is what he did because Alan Young was in a good position on the right. An enormous kick by Kevin Carr, but Pierce was right underneath it. Anderson now for Newcastle. The crowd willing this goal. Keegan, Beardsley, Wobble. It's at the post and Keegan! He's done it! Courtesy of the upright. season he it was who helped it on to Beardsley one shot tipped against the post Keegan on hand to snatch it 1-0 to Newcastle United and the fairy tale ending is on its way to being complete in his 500th league game Kevin Keegan scores his 171st league goal and a fiction writer could not have bettered this. Kevin Keegan, who first played league football 16 years ago as a 17-year-old, helping Newcastle into the lead, and what a shot it was that really produced the opening. The Geordie fans ecstatic. Jones forward. Rhoda's header comes to Wilson. And Connor and Mark on the far side of the area. Brought it down well. Ryan is there. And Alan Young and Connor again. And still Ryan. Now did that cross the line? What total confusion. The Brighton players are claiming that Ryan shot crossed the line when it came down off the bar. But the referee has said play on. Good ball, McDermott. Keegan's in the middle. around we thought that that was handball and then again they're all wearing black and white scarves Connor battling away with Wharton case for Brighton first time ball a good one and it goes towards Ryan and what a mistake by the defender Rhoda slipped as the ball was played in by Alan Young. Ryan had the easiest job of all to slot it into the net and bring the score back level again. Newcastle won, Brighton won. Rhoda admitting that it was his mistake, his slip, which opened up such an easy opportunity for Jerry Ryan. Newcastle won, Brighton won just a couple of minutes before half time, and that has dampened the enthusiasm rather of the majority of people at St. James's Park. 
But Brighton have said all along, whilst they don't want to spoil Kevin Keegan's party, they are intent on playing their part in the match too. And of course, that's exactly what they've got to do. As Jones brings down Truick. There's Keegan, Beardsley, hit him on the uh, foot. And Eric Young intercepted. That's half time, and Kevin Keegan gave this set out 37 crowd what they wanted with that goal after 22 minutes. He's been lively, effort. He seems to have enjoyed it. They certainly have enjoyed his contribution. But Ryan, four minutes before half-time, spoiled things a little as far as the first half is concerned by scoring an equaliser for Brighton. But he only spoils it for Newcastle. Brighton are in this game yet and with a vengeance. Could go either way in the second half. 1-1 at the interval. The great hero at St James's Park, Jackie Mul Mulburn. War Jackie, who was 60 yesterday, now a journalist up here on Tyneside and a man who admires what Kevin Keegan has done for this club as much as anyone on the terraces today. So Keegan helps to set Newcastle underway in this second half with that one goal lead. A difficult swirling wind has rather spoilt this being the spectacle that everyone had hoped for, so far anyway. Newcastle, remember, already sure of promotion to the first division. They made that so with a draw at Huddersfield on Monday and beaten Derby 4-0 here last Saturday. Truick. In it comes again to Keegan. And a fine cross to Wobble. Oh, yes! Keegan proves, as he has done so often through his career, he's not just a scorer of goals, he's a creator too. An immaculate twist and cross by Keegan from the left. And how well Wobble Rose to head it in off the foot of the post. So Keegan scored one and made one for this boy. And Newcastle are back in front. Two goals to one. Wobble's 18th of the season. A lovely moment of high skill from two fine players. One of whom is ending his career. Another in the case of this young man. Chris Waddle, who's just beginning what could be an outstanding career. Scored the only goal back at Brighton in December. He's been a great success since coming from non-league football three and a half years ago. And Keegan has brought the best out of him as he has so many of these Newcastle players. Connor looked to be offside, but the referee has said play on, and he ought to have scored. Well, there's anger, an argument between Newcastle defenders. It certainly looked, as the ball slipped between Roder and Carney, that Connor was in an offside position. The flag stayed down, he went on and hit his shot wide. Eric Young to Connor. Jones. Ryan's flick. Here's Wilson for Brighton. On towards Alan Young. Difficult for Anderson here. He got in a mess. Alan Young has turned and appealed. And gets the corner. But confusion then between Anderson and Kevin Carr. Although really it was difficult in a swirling win with such a high bouncing ball. And Alan Young won the corner. turns it wide well that really ought to have been the equaliser again that corner floated over towards the far post Connor getting up so strongly it hit the woodwork came back and getting from close to goal hit his shot wide Dermot here's Alan Young though Ryan takes over, looks to feed Connor, who's got real pace, 
hit him on the knee and he went in rather dangerously on the goalkeeper obviously a forward has to try and reach a ball like that but really Kevin Carr had come down and it was dangerous because it was his face that was involved Connor showing terrific pace to get between and ahead of the defenders but his enthusiasm got the better of him rather Wilson Scrappy in the middle of the field Connor has gone down injured from his own collision with the goalkeeper there's Anderson for Newcastle and Waddle all the way back to Connor Connor still in agony Wharton and Truick Wharton again Keegan lovely twist and turn away here's Truick Beardsley on the left another bizarre corner the outcome and that will enable Brighton to uh, get their physio on for treatment. The referee's turned his back on the game, and Connor, who's now on his feet, will receive treatment from Mike Yaxley, the physio. And Terry Connor has to limp off. He came off worst in that collision with goalkeeper Kevin Carr, and will play no further part in the game, I think. Neil Smiley has warmed up but hasn't yet been introduced as the corner is taken by Newcastle. And indeed Neil Smiley now comes on. And with Brighton's FA Cup final side of score, of course, and he scored against uh, Middlesbrough in the 3-0 home win on Monday. Five minutes to go. Newcastle 2, Brighton 1. Carney with the clearance. Getting with a spectacular attempt to clear, but it drops for Beardsley. And Keegan. And Beardsley again. And Beardsley still. Oh, magnificent! What a great goal by Peter Beardsley! And that is rounding it off in style. And Kevin Keegan would have been proud of that one himself. What a great goal. Everyone this ground are on their feet Beardsley showing magnificent skill and it looked as though the chance had gone Keegan fed in Eric Young with the tackle it looked as though it had gone away from him what presence of mind he showed to just lift the ball over Joe Corrigan and into the net well that's one of the best goals I've seen for a very long time So this massive crowd celebrates a great goal and another win. 36,415 here. The average attendances at St James's Park have been around 30,000 this season. Kevin Keegan has helped to bring them back into this famous old ground. And players like Peter Beardsley hopefully will keep them coming next season in the first division. When Keegan has gone into retirement. The perfect ending to this game. Well, practice not over, because here goes Keegan again. A breathtaking goal by Beardsley. This is Carney. Keegan is in the centre circle, still wanting the ball, even in the final few seconds of his career, personifying his enthusiasm, his willingness to help others, and his total involvement in the game. And the crowd, only one name on their lips, it's this man, Keegan. Getting for Brighton. Leading the counter-attack. Ryan on the right. The crowd have forgotten the game now. They're just providing the fitting 
farewell to Kevin Keegan. Rhoda back to Wharton. Off it goes towards Keegan. Case gets there first, and that's the final whistle and the final chapter in one of the most remarkable and moving stories in English football history. Kevin Keegan, after 16 years and 500 league games, has rounded off his career in the style which literally made him the hero and the great player he is. Everyone in St James's Park standing to applaud their congratulations. The Brighton players going to shake Keegan's hand and the Newcastle players too playing their part in these scenes of great emotion. Everyone in the stand on their feet now. The photographers as usual surrounding the little man with the familiar number seven jersey. And Kevin Keegan who's graced the game says farewell. I'm sure there will be more scenes and another lap of honour from Kevin Keegan. But as far as league footballers concerned, that's the end. The match ended in a 3-1 victory. Keegan scored a goal, made a goal, and had a part in a quite magnificent third goal scored by Peter Beersley. Ryan getting one back for Brighton. The full-time score, Newcastle United 3, Brighton 1. The crowd being urged to stay on their places on the terraces because there will be a final lap of honour from Kevin Keegan before he says what I'm sure... Jim Flatt returns in goal after injury, and with Terry Cochran still unfit,